Welcome to the Nerdiverse. Go ahead, sit and listen to the masters, the old heads, talk about what you love the most. Video games, comics, movies, and everything you need to maintain your We got the knowledge that's straight out the ether. Gonna need a drink and have to take a seat to expand your mind and listen to the speaker. Mike and the squad's gonna give you what you need. Please uh, send in a question. Come and get some answers. Learn a couple lessons from the masters with the special guests. We got the green lanterns glowing on our chest. Yes, please sit back and relax. Cause we're gonna hit you with them stole cold facts. And allow me to be the very first to welcome you to the masters of the Nerdiverse. Welcome to Masters of the Nerdiverse podcast, where we always have such rights to show you. This quiet library of a podcast can be found on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, SoundCloud, YouTube, and iHeartRadio. I'm, of course, your host, Mike G. And with me, as always, is my co-host, my friend, and confidant, Winter Trash Monk the Third. Good evening. I'm friend of Mike G. Trash Monk the Third. That's Trash Monk I I I for all you Hispanic folks, or Trash Monk. I-I-I! And I'm coming at you from the little cubby space that is a small Barnes and Noble in my house. He because built- I. I work at a Barnes and Noble, as you can tell from my voice. <laughs> he built a Barnes and Noble in his house. It's kind of crazy. Would you like a coffee while reading about the rise and fall of the Third Reich? <laughs> <laughs> There's a sale, thirty percent off yeah. all books that start with We've mine. Come. That we're the bathroom destination of all the homeless people in the area. It doesn't smell if you hold your nose. All right, I'm done. Next. How was your week? <laughs> <laughs> My week was good. Uh, I'm gonna. I have a. I have a uh, grind your gears moment. Go for uh, it. That I read about today. I mean, what else am I going to talk about for this week? I mean, I played a lot of Rocket League. I'm in. I'm in a particular jam of going up and down in particular area of three ranks. Uh, played some Borderlands two. We uh, did some Dungeons and Dragons, Ooh. but. The th- this is the part that is grinding my gears. Mm-hmm. So I read it just before we started recording. It's uh, an article. So the uh, Us just came out, right? Jordan Peele's movie. Yep. And then this morning, I watched a whole thing about uh, Lupita, um, how she got the – how she uh, – uh, portray- like how she portrayed the uh, the character Red, like how did she get that voice that she does? And then she mentions that she was looking at a a particular physical disorder or a mental dis. I can't remember what what it was, but it was a certain disorder that she was taking inspiration from. And in my mind, I'm like, that's cool. And you know what? That is the normal response that people should have. Like she's taking inspiration from real life things, but. I look up online that Us Magazine or some atrocious magazine has now started going, Lupita is getting, uh, uh, is getting, um, what is it? Um, Getting some back, what's the word? Backlash? Some feed, a backflash. She's getting some negative feedback from using, from portraying a mental or like a portraying a disorder that she doesn't have that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, Mm -hmm. this is what is happening. (laughs) Folks. Winter, man. What what can I tell you, man? We live in a different world, man. What can I tell you? No, no, no. So there's so many, uh, there, there are so many things going on in this. First, it, the person who was – so the article is dumb by itself. Mm-hmm. But then there's the feedback on Twitter going, you idiots actually believe this stuff? And I'm like, wait a minute. You're just tweeting you idiots. So who are you talking about? Mm-hmm. The only idiot is you for retweeting something that's dumb. <laughs> okay. 
if you were if I can understand if you're retweeting it and going look at this dumb article and then interacting with it, but then taking it at face value and going, wow, this is <laughs> this is dumb, and you guys actually believe it. You're also dumb in this category, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> right, and if we just need to take a step back, folks. This is where we fall back, <laughs> and <laughs> we need to like realize. So, like, not everyone should have a voice. <laughs> okay, okay, oh, I, oh, I say that back knowing that I could. Back it up. Yes, let me back that up. What I'm saying is, just relax. Never. Okay. Do you know the internet has no just, chill, dude? You know the internet has no chill, but it dude. does. It just. The internet is just made up of people, and therefore the people themselves have to control themselves. No, it, 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 I do not get on. I do not get into Facebook debates. I do not get in Twitter yeah, debates unless so yeah. they're stupid. Hashtag I love the cocoa. Mm-hmm. And I, it's, it's like the internet is not real life. Folks. The internet has no chill, bro. Like you're what you're talking about is the vocal minority, right? Now, the, what the internet has given us, and not even just the internet, what social media has given us is a big, giant bullhorn to the social minority, or you know what I mean, or to the the um, the vocal minority, and that's good or bad, right? Because the good start part of it is that you know there are uh, communities and societies that wouldn't have that kind of app- that wouldn't kind of have that type of stage to say what they want to say in a positive match, but. On the other side, you have idiots reaching out to stars, wanting to giving them uh, giving them murder messages about how they portrayed a character in Justice League. You know, it's, it's it's it goes the door swings both ways. There's nothing we can do about it, man. Unless you just want to destroy there, the internet. There is something that you you just have to, you have to be the bearer of. I I am taking responsibility of my own actions. You're therefore, asking. I will not. Yeah. I will not participate in the, this. You can say that, and I know it's going to be tough. Just like because it is lit. It's like there is scientific evidence that there is something that triggers in your brain a dopamine reaction to this type of stuff, right? Uh-huh. And it's it literally it is going to suck. It's like breaking like sugar sort of thing. But after a while, you are going to look past this and go, I really spent hours upon hours talking about this on Twitter. I really spent a podcast talking about nerd culture. That's what you're going to be thinking about. (laughs) Yeah, Uh, you're uh, you're asking way too much of the human condition, man. You're asking way. Yeah. Because what you're doing is you're, you're you're, you're speaking to the person, but not the people, you know. The person may say, oh, that Frankenstein may be a nice man when you start to get to talk to him. But the people with their with their with their uh, pitchforks and their fire sticks are screaming, kill him, you know, <laughs> kill him. And they're a blind mob. The Internet's vitriol is blind and unforgiving, but it has a short memory. You know what I mean? So it'll move on to the next thing. They don't care. They just want to be mad about something. In the in that twenty four hour news cycle, you know, so just let them be mad. Right. They'll move on to something else that's dumb. That why are you clinging yes. to this so fervor with such fervor? You know. Now here, mm. yeah, because here's the other thing that we have to keep in mind as well. There are people who literally define themselves by what they do on Twitter and on on mm-hmm. the internet, and it's like they have no connection outside of that. This is what they yep. are. And there and there's people who will like live or die f- by mm-hmm. this, and if they're if they're that far gone, then I would have to. There has to be room for them because if you cut them off cold turkey, it is going to be a madhouse. Yeah, you can't do it. It's too late. Like I already have enough. I already have enough people who see people just like walking around. Like I don't. I don't have to go. Well, I, I don't. I, ah, man. Here's the thing, man. It's like everyone knows the brick wall. It's a person in your life yes. that you can't tell anything. May it be over pious religion. May it be their their mastery of a of sports, like their walking sports 
uh, almanac, may it be their video game prowess, may it be whatever, but they're a brick wall. You can't talk to them because they're, yes. they're already so right that there's no way they could be wrong. And the internet is giving voice to all these people who don't want to hear it. And they're, you know, like Bill Hicks, Bill Hicks does mention, I think there's an important point. He was talking mostly about TV at the time where they talk about murder, famine, AIDS, death, war, fam- like that sort of thing. And then he looks outside the window. There's nothing. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, now picture the, that's the TV still doing that but now you have a device on you all the time that will keep you informed yeah. like it will ring to tell you like hey this is yeah. what's going on so that that's i don't want to get too much of a tangent there because there is something else that grinded my gears i, I, I have a grind now. my gears too so we may be talk we may be grinding gears for a little bit but we're, it's cool it's cool yes so this is uh i don't follow a lot about the nfl mm-hmm. folks but sports ball this is this is by far <laughs> bonkers. Like I've like we've talked about here about um, football players who are paid millions of dollars on here, but they and they have on their contract just don't smoke pot, just don't do it. Just lay off, <laughs> as Stephen A. Smith yes. would say, lay it, off the weed. Lay off the weed. I'm glad that you mentioned your hero, Jesus. Stephen A. Smith. He's Please. a good. <laughs> Yes. Um, anyway, <laughs> let's move on from that. Please. So, Ari- so here's another thing: Arizona Cardinals head coach Cliff Clingsbury, whatever his Burry. name, he is instituting a plan to keep his players' attention. Cell phone breaks. Okay, that's fine. I don't see any problem. Twenty minutes at a time. Give them a break and get them back in. Okay. So. I am going to sound like an old man here for a second, but I would shove a million dollars down these players' throats and go, you can stay off your freaking phone for a million dollars. I would do it for 50 bucks a day. (laughs) If they told me that, hey, we'll give you – if someone came up to me going, hey, I'll give you 50 bucks a day if you can stay off your phone. That's – for, and that this is the thing. Stay off your phone for a particular amount of time for their practice or for their meetings. Fifty dollars for it, so it's not an entire day either. And I would go in this, yeah, yeah. In in this culture, it's impossible. I don't, I don't know <laughs> because it's impossible. How often do you see a human without a phone? But is it because life? they are they at work though, or are they? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's true. People surf their phones at work. People surf their phones in church. People surf their phones in the, in the toilet. People surf their phones when they're walking to go surf their other right. phone. Right, but the vast majority of those people aren't being paid millions of dollars to throw a ball around. It's all relative. Like uh, People don't... at work will, will, will check their phone in a meeting. In a meeting where you're supposed to be attentive and paying attention to the business, the business, business. I don't know if it's no, relative least- too much, though, because it's like these folks, they aren't the only ones. If you want to get into the darker side of the NFL, it's they're They aren't the only ones depending on this million dollars. Like it's it's been uh, like reported or like talked about how when it was payday in the NFL, people's family members would be waiting in the parking lots sort of thing to get money so it's not just like them waiting and and they still i don't know i don't know hey if if it was i it's an addiction yeah if they want to do that more power to them but i thought that nfl is supposed to be about discipline and about getting a team (laughs) spirit yeah but you know (laughs) discipline in the nfl these are the same guys who are injecting like moose moose urine into their veins to get like some kind of like you know yeah. some kind of bulk up and so they can do that but they can't put money. down their phone <laughs> they can't put down weed either man they can't put down in performance enhancing drugs it's human nature people gonna want what they want this is a good time to shout out the podcast dumb people town <laughs> yeah Give them a shout out, man. Check out the Scar Brothers, Dumb People Town. All right, let's. I I can't talk about that anymore because I'm. It's gonna anger up the blood, and I have to prepare. I have to save that for when I record tomorrow. But yeah, anger <laughs> up the blood, man. Yeah, got my blood boiling. All right, 
Uh, real quick, uh, I, I, re- I have a Grind My Gears article that I want to talk about. But what did I do? I just played more uh, Legend of Zelda. Uh, I still suck at Rocket League, so I'm practicing that. Mm-hmm. I was able to watch Enter the Spider-Verse, which is good. And I was able to watch um, Aquaman, which is okay. And that's pretty much what I did with my week. But my Grind My Gears is based off a video game article that was released uh, in, in regards to the new video game from From Software, Sekiro, um, Shadows Die Twice. Have you seen this, Winner? No. <laughs> Where the guy the guy did a review on the game. I think I don't want to say it's a Kotaku review. I'll link the actual article in the show notes. Uh, but he was pretty much saying that Sekiro, which is a notoriously difficult game, it's, it's a From Software game. These are the people who made Dark Souls and Bloodborne, and they don't make easy games. That's the whole point. Uh, he was saying that uh, because there's not an easy mode, that from software is showing a level of disrespect to gamers by not giving them the option to play the game on an easier level for those who can't perform at the level that the game uh, demands to progress in the game. And at first, I was just kind of like, that sounds like a whole like part of me wants to be like that sounds like a whole lot of get good. You know what I mean? But that's too toxic. I don't want to I don't like feeling that way. But then it became a whole Twitter argument about, well, what if you have disabilities? You can't play this game. It, it becomes a, a, a it becomes kind of a a way of uh gatekeeping your game from gamers who can't maybe perform at the at the level that you're requesting for this game. And that's where I got triggered. Because a lot of people were saying from software is disrespecting those with disabilities because their game's difficulty is too high for those people with disabilities who can't function enough to play the game. And I oh feel a certain way about that. And that's where the comp that's where the argument went. Cause you know, people will start to backtrack or backpedal when they're losing an argument to just to deflect it to something else. Right. So it's like someone says from software needs to put easy mode in their games. And, and I say, no, they don't. That's the whole point. Don't buy the game. If you can't, if that's not what you're into, you know what I mean? That's the whole point of the game is to be difficult and rewarding once you've mastered the game. And then they back, start backpedaling. Well, 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 what if uh, I only had one arm? I couldn't play. The-. I was like, well, first off, there's going to be a lot of games that you're not going to be able to play in that, in that sense, uh, in that regard. But even people with one arm, people with disabilities, have mastered video games. That's not like di- difficulty and accessibility are two different things. You know what I mean? Like, can you make the character go forward? Can you, can you push the buttons on it? however conf- configuration the game is set to? Yes. Then learn the game. That's the difficult. That's where difficulty comes in. You know, you can't tell me there's, pl- there, there aren't ways for p- people who are, you know, who have some kind of ailment, are are disadvantaged they've learned to overcome that to, to do what they want to do i saw a youtube video the other day with a kid who had cerebral palsy deadlifting like 300 pounds because that's what he aspired to do so he he trained and he learned how to do it his way you know you and like that article just triggered me so hard because i'm like you totally don't get the whole point of this stuff like as a game journalist you don't yeah. get the point of playing games <laughs> I'm becoming like that's convinced most- that there are – well, it's not that much of a surprise really – that there are video game journalists who they themselves only have a basic knowledge of video games. The most basic knowledge, yeah. like the most basic grip on what it is to play a game and enjoy it as a – I hate the yeah. term gamer. I think gamer is a toxic term mm-hmm. as someone who enjoys video games. And you know, it's like, only going to get worse uh, I, because the more money that you have in it ha- have coming in from like Fortnite esports stuff like that, you're gonna then have esports reporters come in and go, "Is there enough zip and zop and the zip zops?" Yeah. <laughs> That's I'm not sure of what's going on. Yeah, is there is there more X and Y than Zs and Bs? <laughs> That's what it's like. like- it's like, don't talk to me about difficulty where you have a guy like Brawly Legs who's one of the best Chun-Li fighting game players of all time. Right. 
in the, in the in the guy has like a a disability where he's literally playing the game with his tongue right in his his thumb and he's beasting on cats online with lag you know what i mean like this guy is amazing yep. but he did not let that stop him from doing what he wanted to do right so there is a separation in accessibility and difficulty just buy an xbox about- adaptive controller and let's move and that there you go that's a whole another avenue that microsoft brilliantly is like hey this is an adaptive controller. You can adapt it to however you want. We want you to enjoy our games. Like anyone, like Cuphead, this should, like, you should be able to play Cuphead at, at its hardest difficulty, no matter what the situation is, right. if you really want to play it that way. And, you know, you're asking game developers to build their games around every single contingency when they want to make a niche game. You know, I don't know. Like, am I being ignorant to this? Because I don't want to spark anything. But I'm just saying, like, I think... That that is a part of a bullshit re- re- excuse for being mad that you, Mister, I have a day or two to write a review and I can't because the game's too hard. Right. So I'm going to complain about it. Journalist, yeah, who's not understanding the full spirit of the game. And there's the whole you thing know? of I'm reading all these other articles about how hard the game is, but maybe I need to be different. And I'm right. going to be edgy. Yeah. I'm going to call out the the game developer that I'm writing this article for. There's not enough fleebs in my flops. <laughs> stop being a stop being a coward and make the game easy. <laughs> right? Like get out of here, man. Like there's games I'm not going to be good at. Like I I'm not good at the from software games. I suck at them. Right. I got stuck on Demon Souls and just tapped out, but I appreciate them. I'm not going to be like, "Oh, I'm salty. I can't play these games cuz just I didn't, if I, just imagine you know? the type of person who's. I, I don't want. I'm becoming. More, this is this is agitating me as well. Like just imagine the person writing those type of articles. Like yeah, right. <sighs> imagine a kind of yeah. self entitled vitriol in 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 pompous you know just attitude. Well, if I if the game yeah. doesn't feel comfortable for me personally, then it must be a bad game. Yeah, he sounds like he doesn't like coconut either. So let's just. Uh... Oh, you know what? We're going to the news. Okay. I don't like, you know, I don't like all this coconut yeah. controversy that you're trying to trying to upstir on this episode of the podcast, sir. We to took it to off the, the people. news and shove it down your throat. It's time for MOT in news. News, news, news. We've already taken the coconut debate to the people, and you saw the results. So I don't know why you must talk of these things. The people. This is why democracy never works. <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay. I see what's in your Barnes & Noble what, what literature. <laughs> yes, a bunch of Gwen Beck, a, a bunch of Mark Levin, a bunch of Michael Savage, and now I've been flagged. <laughs> uh, and, and now the podcast is dead. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> it's gone. And cut. <laughs> good. We had a good run, man. Yes. Beautiful. Oh man, let's get into this news, my man. Now that we've we're vented, we're feeling better. Yes. Got things off the chest. Namaste. Namaste. Uh, Jai Guru. Serenity now. Serenity now. Um. Nothing's gonna change my world. George likes spicy chicken. <laughs> George likes his chicken spicy. Spicy, there you go. Yeah, man. These pretzels, These pretzels are making, pretzels making me thirsty. <laughs> Get out of my brain, dude. These pretzels are making me thirsty. Serenity now! Speaking of fans who are going to need serenity, uh, you know the shots play Fireflies remake? Fireflies coming <laughs> Fireflies coming back. No, April April first has already passed, unfortunately, so we can't have yeah. our mean field episode. But have you heard about this Child's Play remake that's coming out? Yes. Uh, and are you familiar with the history of Child's Play? I've never play? watched any of the Child's Play movie. I think I watched what? maybe brought. I I watched the one where they're trying to have a baby, and there's something about a turkey baster in the. Are you talking about uh, that one movie with the blind Sound guy? Of, and the- Seed of Chucky, I believe. Oh, Seed of Chucky? Okay. Yeah. You know- That's the only one I've seen, and I was like, I don't need to see anything else. Yeah, I'm going to give you the, the, the Child's Play pro tip. Child's Play 1, Child's Play 2, that's it. You don't need to watch 3. You don't need to watch any of the new age two, 90s ones. Get them all out of there. Just Child's Play 1 and 2. That's all you need. 
Because because Chucky in the military school is the weakest. Uh, fight me, Child's Play Three. <laughs> That's when he pretty much becomes an earnest character. Yeah, Chucky right. goes to day camp. Chucky in space, like fight me. Like I don't care. Oh, Let's give the- Chucky in the trash can. Be- <laughs> <laughs> Charles Lee Ray is the stapler. You know, uh, I don't care. That's the one hill I will die on. But uh, apparently Mark Hamill is going to be doing the voice of Chucky. In I did trailer. hear that. I did hear about that. And we were talking about this during our D&D session. And they were like, hey, Mike, how do you feel, it, feel about it? And Mike's sentiment, my gut sentiment was, I'll allow it. <laughs> you know? right. Calling on the field stands. <laughs> Calling on the field stands. Uh holding on the offense, man. I'll allow it. Because Mark Hamill, in my eyes, can do no wrong. And he has that that Cagney and Lacey kind of that you know, that not Cagney and Lacey, he has that like that that cool grip to his voice. As long as it doesn't sound too much like the Joker, I'm down, dude. I don't care. He'll figure right. it out. It's Mark Hamill, man. Yeah, he's an he's an accomplished voice actor at this point, so he can do whatever he wants, man. It actually gives the movie some clout in my in my eyes. He adds more weight yeah. to it. <laughs> yeah, what would what would happen though? This is like this is the end. Of, so he's probably going to be out of Star Wars by the end of the year. Probably, <laughs> if it, this, yeah. Storyline's mm-hmm. gonna his storyline's gonna be over. Yep. Uh, so now he needs to find another <laughs> franchise to oh, connect himself with. Yeah. Wow, I would hope and not. Indiana man. Jones won't happen, so I would be super down with the Indiana Jones reboot. Dude. Yeah, I'll be super down and get like Chris and get like Chris Pratt to be Indiana Jones. Dude. Yes, watch out! Watch out! Uh, Short Round's got a new alpha. <laughs> Short Round does have a new alpha. Yeah. Oh man! So no, I have no segue for that joke. And it has no segue for this article, so I'm just gonna squeal like a child that Borderlands Three finally got its trailer and it looks amazing. Yes. By the way, the uh, the direct the I watched a little bit of the live video before the reveal. Mm-hmm. Oh my oh gosh! My God, what's it the company looks... again for Borderlands Three? Gearbox. Gearbox, or, bro. Yeah, what are they doing over there? I don't know, man. <laughs> Mad scientist. So, does. so I want my uh, my buddy sent me a link to it, and it was like I thought he sent me like a joke link because it's a guy on stage doing magic tricks. They don't know. And I go, nope, this is the real deal. They're doing magic tricks for a Borderlands show because you know, do it. Everyone, a everyone in that room wanted to. See, <laughs> okay, a no one in that room wanted to see magic tricks. They wanted to see video games. And B, magic tricks is one of the lowest of the forms of entertainment. <laughs> one of my favorite uh, jokes is from uh, Andrew Dice Clay, uh, is a really old comedian. He's like, he, he's like, hey, no, he's like, I fucking hate magicians. <laughs> they like, why? He like, got to use his voice. Got to use his voice. I hate fucking magicians. Oh, pull three rings apart. Yay! <laughs> it's like they're so lame and so oh, three rings apart. Oh, oh, get out of here, hickory dickory dark. We're not gonna finish because that joke. I want uh, this podcast is one curse word away from being explicit. So, Quills. <laughs> reminds me of that one movie, Twins. Yes, <laughs> stupid. He, yes, and he's the reason why he's here is your fault. He is okay. okay. Andrew Dice Andrew Dice Clay has a throne in the Nerdiverse somewhere. It's fine. He's an honorary yeah. member. He's an honorary master. Wherever you are, Andrew, we're talking about you. Borderlands Three has a billion guns, bro. <laughs> hey, a star is born. I got a star for you. Hey, <laughs> maybe uh, next time, Bradley Coops. <laughs> Bradley Coops. <Yeah>. Bradley Coops. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's burnt out. Do you have anything to add that of of weight to Borderlands <laughs> Three? <laughs> uh, buy the Hanson Collection on Steam. It's fifteen bucks for the entire Borderlands Two and Borderlands Two Point Five game. The pre sequel. And play the Telltale game too. Tales of the Borderlands. That's good shit. There's our curse word. We're we're, we're um, explicit now. No, you so. already cussed before, but you know, whatever. Oh, I'm not counting or anything. 
uh, to get the rated R, you need like three. You need like three f bombs. I think. Uh-huh. So we got like one more f bomb to go. You should check that movie out. This film's not been rated. That's heard- a good movie about the uh, uh, rating system. The rating system. I'm gonna check that out. I'm fascinated mm-hmm. by it. Uh, speaking of movies, did you see that scary tales to tell the scary stories to tell in the dark trailer? I sure have. It looks pretty cool, actually. I uh, cool. I'm down to see it. I'm down to see it too. This is the thing that Guillermo del Toro is kind of like, kind of a uh, piggy banking. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully, like, I'll be done with Boston Legal before then. You're never going to be done with Boston Legal, bro. You're like, you're like me and Bo- you're like me and Burn Notice. As soon as it's over, you're like one more again. You just started from season one. <laughs> no, I, it's so hard for me to wa- rewatch TV shows like that. I've only done that twice with Sons of Anarchy yeah. and uh, Shield, dude. Like. Only other, other than Burn Notice, the only other TV show I can just watch over and over and over is like Seinfeld. And it's that. Oh, yeah. Seinf- okay. I lied. Seinfeld, Frasier, uh, uh, Everybody Loves Raymond. Mary with Children as well. I can just. Oh, I've never seen. I haven't seen a single episode of that show. Oh, I know what we're doing when we hang out that one time. I'm just going to bring a bunch of Mary with Children cassettes. We're just going to sit and watch that all night. Get drunk. Yes, please bring cassettes. cassettes. That, will, that will guarantee we'll never watch one. Uh, we're going to figure it out. I'm going to bring my cassette player. Doug. We're going to plug it into your Teva. It's going to be amazing. Don't threaten me on the podcast. Don't pull your knife out while I'm standing next to you. Uh, this is quick because I really don't have anything to say about it. Angelina Jolie is is picked to play in Marvel's Eternals movie. I don't know a lot about Angelina Jolie. I don't know a lot about the Eternals as a couple book. I don't know what to say. It's news. It's on the docket. Yeah. Angie Joel, Eternals movie. Oh, oh. It, it, so her children are eternally grateful. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. This is my fault. Ladies and gentlemen, I've I've, I've injected. Winter. This is the nice dice clay. I've, I've injected. Uh, I've injected Winter with the Andrew Dice Clay disease, and he has he has to work through his system. Yeah, can you imagine weaponized Andrew Dice Clay? Like you put it like, except for a hollow tip, is an Andrew Dice Clay. Hey, the ones with a man from Nantucket, and he left. Oh, oh. <laughs> uh, speaking of things that make me just want to leave. Uh, Sony announced the Aristocats. <laughs> the Aristocats. That's the best joke of all time for those who know how to say it right. Uh, have you ever heard Bob Saget's like fifteen minute Aristocrats joke? So amazing. Get out of here! Yeah, I've seen it's, it. It's beautiful, <laughs> masterfully mm-hmm. done. Uh, man, we don't have that many that much news left, and a whole and a whole lot of podcasts left. This is going to be a fun episode, dude. <laughs> Fun stuff. So, Iron Man VR is a thing on PS4 VR. Yeah. I don't give a shit, Doug. Uh, yes. They're still trying to put, they're still trying to, trying to make VR go like, everyone's asking for VR. Everyone wants this it. Is a guy like this <laughs> kind of situation. I, and I could vent for this for 10, 20 minutes, but I'm not going to. But, yeah. VR has so much potential if you guys stop treating it like a damn toy and, and give it some air and respect. Like the same with 3D. Like every, Avatar did as much as it could at the time with 3D and it made a billion dollars, mm-hmm. right? It really thought yeah. about it and was like, okay, how can we. It wasn't the 3D, you think, that made it the billion dollars? It's all the 3D. Avatar as a story is garbage, dude. Okay. Oh the Avatar God. film is garbage. Do you, I wonder if you hear yourself sometimes. Mike. A, Avatar <laughs> movie without the 3D is hot garbage, dog. It's wow, it's Fern Gully, dude. It's just Fern Gully. It's not even Fern Gully. The year closest. It, oh. The 3D makes it in the in, oh. in the graphical innovations, dog. <laughs> I sounded like Austin there yeah, for a you, minute. You, you sounded like <laughs> cool. you sounded like Dastrum for a second. <laughs> yeah. But uh but I'm just saying, like three D used right can be beautiful and amazing. Like if you've played Resident Evil Seven in VR, it's amazing. It's a completely different game. Because right. they're not using that some goofball, I'm flying kind of nonsense. It's a game 
And then Mike has been telling me about the other uh, reviews from the Pornhub VR games. He said that they were really good. You really get in there. So you, you get your elbow deep, dude. You get your elbow <laughs> deep, right? Stop. All right. I, I apologize for bringing that up. I fell into that <laughs> one. <laughs> You've done this. Yeah. You've done Quick, Dice Clay, give me some strength. Uh, Iron Man's like, Repulsor Ray. <laughs> 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 this whole gauntlet is in 3D and VR. And while, while, he's, while he's deep, he goes, Repulsor Ray. Yes. Now, I do have an issue where they could have made an Iron Man game that everyone could enjoy. <laughs> where? <laughs> Why would they do that? Yeah. Like an open world Iron Man game where you can be evil Iron Man or you can be good Iron what, Man. Or like Infamous? <laughs> like, Infamous. like Fable. Like Fable 3. Oh, we have a game on the docket that's kind of going to be kind of like that. Uh, but I will say this until they, they prove me wrong. Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat 11. Uh, yeah. Disney is very cheap when it comes to their video games. They've always been cheap. Disney has never made good video games. For anything. What are you talking about? Get one good <laughs> Disney video game. I'll wait. Toy Story for the Super Check Nintendo. The last good Disney game was Aladdin on the Genesis. And I'll fight you for that. <sighs> All right. Well, you know. Epic, Epic uh, Mickey. Maybe. I don't count Kingdom Hearts. Okay. Because you know why? Okay, 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 okay. I didn't play Kingdom Hearts three because I was salty. Yeah. Because Disney removed all the square Enix characters. I did not did not provoke you did. this. this is apropos of nothing. <laughs> I did not. This is apropos. Of nothing. Uh, Disney. Yes. I was I was super down to play Kingdom Hearts three. You remember? I was hype, dude. I was so hype. But then I started seeing like, uh-huh. where's Cloud? Like where's uh uh where's the Sephiroth Coliseum battle? They're not going to run into Noctis in the Final Fantasy 15 guys. There's like no Square Enix characters in Kingdom Hearts. Where the whole point of the Kingdom Hearts is that it's supposed to be have Disney have Square Enix. Urgh, Disney is the worst. But here's Johnny Depp. Oh, hey there, matey. Play the guitar. Remember me from 21 Jump Street? Oh, Disney's the worst. And. In, a, right. in Marvel, and other than like, I don't even know how the Spider Man PS4 game was made. I don't know how they did it. It's like they told Disney to go sit outside and let us do what we got to do. It's pretty much what happened. No interference. Tell us what we use. Leave right. the room. God, Disney's so bad at that. I would, mm. That's why Marvel's Capcom Infinite sucked because they wouldn't let any X Men in because they didn't want to market characters that weren't under their brand. Bastards. Anyway. That grinds my gears. Mm-hmm. We're going to talk about that cool Fable game that uh, Winner was talking about. It's called Darkborn. Did you, Darkborn. Did you see the trailer for this thing, dude? Or whatever they had running for it? Uh, no, I haven't. I've read a little bit about it. cool. Though. Like, you play, like, this weird, like, forest nymph or something. Mm-hmm. Like, this little baby thing. Yeah. And your, and your family's murdered by, like rampaging vikings it's like some kind of fantasy world and you're and you grow up from being an imp to a grown ass super monster and you can decide to be merciful or decide to be just complete beast mode and it's like a rpg slash like i don't know if it's third over the shoulder or third person but it looks kind of interesting like you said it reminds me of fables like the whole choice system like the direction you want to take your your character in is supposed to be very fluid you know, so I'm down. I like new creative IPs. In fact, I prefer those to most uh, sequels and remakes nowadays. Honestly, like Bio Mutant. When's that coming out? Bio Mutant. <laughs> That's just fun to say. But check out uh, Darkborn. Uh, should be coming out to a theater new you soon. This is strictly Michael News. Mike Michael G. Don't want to dox myself. But there's a new Mortal Kombat character. Is her name is Sertrion Citrion. Um, it's a new character. Mortal Kombat's coming out this month, guys. Get hype. And the end of the news is about the new uh Sega Genesis Mini. That's not a piece of trash. Apparently it looks good. 40 games. With the mini. <laughs> this friend 
Why? Yeah. If only we had devices that we could play these games already. <laughs> no, you know, Sony, uh, Sega doesn't want to hear that, dude. <laughs> of course. Nintendo. Sega, they make some good games, but then they do this. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I don't. I want. I don't want to be too hard on them. Uh, you know how Sony has bailed out of E3 this year, and like EA has bailed out on E3 this year. Uh, would it be crazy if Sega just announced the console at E3, just, just stole the spot? Isn't Sega bought by some Sega other company? It's owned though? by some weird, like super, like uh, Asian company or something like that, like Tencent or something. Right. But they said they got money behind them. They can come out with a new console if they want. Yeah, the the only way they could make uh, w- the only way I would be excited about it if like Sega was going to introduce like, hey, we're releasing a console that is meant for uh, those people that have friends that come over to where it ha- so no more um, having needing internet to play multiplayer, Ooh. but having like four ports, like white, like trying to corner that market of people who, who still have friends that come over and play games. That's when I'll get interested. Sega Genesis two has no online. Well, it would be it's, first. It's As, weird that they're calling Sega Genesis. It's calling it Sega, Sega Genesis Gen- two when Genesis means it's beginning or something like that. Shut up. Like the Lone and Rangers. they can't call it <laughs> Sega <up>. Exodus 2. <laughs> they call it Sega Exodus 3. <laughs> and it has like it has, it has 12 um controller mm-hmm. ports. And it, and uh it can it can play up to 12 people at the same time. And it has blazing 4K uh rendering because all the energy that would have went to managing like servers and uh, managing uh, online capabilities just goes to graphics. It's all graphics, dude. It's like a miniature uh, PC gaming rig with no right. internet. None of the games have updates or, or patches or anything. The game is the game. Yeah. And you buy it at a store. And you know what? A thing that I just realized that they could have, like Nintendo didn't do this either. But why aren't they including making people actually want to buy this more? Uh, like the capability for people to insert slot, have like cartridge slots, so that they can put in their old games on these devices. I want to say marketing wise, it's a it's a level of control. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like they don't want people putting in playing pirated games and pirated because once you open that door, <laughs> you're gonna have that one guy who slips in a a uh, memory stick with over 500 games on it. You know what I mean? Just turn it into your yeah. pirate box. You know what I mean? Yeah, I guess they're still you living know? in a world where that's not already happening. <laughs> it's not happening to them. You can't tell. You can't tell Nintendo anything about emulators. It's 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 bad words. That's like it's like an old it. man that yeah. thinks that World War One is over and that World War Two has never happened. You just don't want to break the news to him. You don't want to break the, You don't want to tell him. Yeah. Just let that's the old man dumb, be dude. in the corner. Let him live the rest of his life with his head in the, in the sand, man. That's his wish. Can we can we bless him with his no. wish? No. Okay, so... <laughs> That's all I got. That's all I got, man. Uh, what are you looking forward to, dude? Let's see here. I might be going to a memorial service on Saturday, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, Sorry to hear yeah. that. Uh, well, the lady, I believe, was 92 or 96 or 98. She lived yeah, her life. Yeah. Man. It's like, it's not, it's not that sad of a thing. It's, gonna, it's a, a memorial service. People are going to be cracking jokes, I believe, and stuff. And Andrew, Andrew Dice Clay yeah. is going to be there. Oh, 92 years old. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> Hickory. Oh, <laughs> we're never gonna finish that day because it's Dickery, too dickery dot. We're sad to see her go. So uh, <laughs> I feel bad after that one. Give me drinks to Methuselah. Yeah. Oh. Uh, <laughs> moving on. So I I'm looking forward to that a little bit. 
Um, looking over the, the hockey season's winding down, Stanley Cup Finals is about to take place. So I'm excited to see what happens. Um, hey. Okay. And, you know, following baseball, following uh, basketball, and, you know, trying to play- – oh, I'm playing hacky sack again. I'm trying to get back into that. When you got them hacky sack thighs. Oh, though. it's no, it's, it it's like I kids are going, Whoa, I couldn't believe you just or, did that because they all think that I'm just a big guy that can't move and that I just do these crazy yeah. hacky sack things. That's what's up, man. Trick yep. them. They're not ready. Nope. They're not ready for your next level hacky sack skills, dude. Teach them the tricks, man. You got to be like Pele out there. It's like I was watching this video of Mike Tyson doing like punch cutters. And it's the scariest thing in the world. Because <laughs> you think, like, oh, my God, this is like 55, 60. Now, is that related to gun no. kata? Gun kata is, okay, we have time to kill, so we're just going to talk about gun kata for a second. No, there's, there's a ever- hockey game on right now. So, <laughs> so I did not mean to bring up gun kata. I didn't oh, realize oh, you had a 15-minute audio essay ready to go. Ready to go. We're talking about equilibrium, first of all. Yes. Equilibrium starred uh Sean Bean and uh and uh Christian Bale before Batman uh, and Tay Diggs, where it was illegal to feel in their sounds in like their, their last marriage. Martial, <laughs> okay, go oh. on. <laughs> in their form of martial art in the future was gun kata, where you have to like, where pretty much think of Dante and Devil May Cry too, where his arms are moving around but he's standing still, yeah. just shooting behind him, around his back and. Just look it up. What you know about gun? There's actually a guy who's practicing gun kata on YouTube. He does like a like martial arts <laughs> exhibit on gun kata. What? I gotta find him, dude. Yes. I gotta find and of him, course, man. it's a Midwestern skinny white boy in a matrix trench coat and glasses. Yeah. You know what? With guys like that, you don't even like bother him. Just let him be do what he wants to do. Bro. I'd be scared you to don't, bother you don't, him. To me, let's see. You don't. You don't want to unleash him to the world, dude. Those kind of cats, the you know, like you do that kid that took Naruto way too seriously when you were growing up. You were trying to, yeah, I think I do a time. podcast with one. Uh, <laughs> oh, shut up! You don't, you don't know how well that statement was. <laughs> you kind of you low key under triggered me, dude. Like I, I had a flashback. <laughs> I'm sorry. Of me trying to part. What I did used to do though, when I was a kid, I used to watch the kung fu movies with my friends, like Enter the Thirty Six Chambers and Man with the Golden Arm and Born Invincible and Fear- Fearless Hyena and the Five Deadly Venoms and Spiritual Kung Fu and uh, the Twelve Pole Monks and all those super cool seventies uh, Shaw Brothers kung fu movies with Gordon Liu and with Jackie Chan, old Jackie Chan before uh, Rumble in the Bronx, Jackie Chan, good Jackie Chan is good Jackie Chan. <laughs> And we they would have these training sequences where the Shaolin monks would do all these crazy things like uh, put blades on their arms and carry water. So if your arms dip a certain lower weight, you cut your your ribs with blades. So you have to keep your arms up to gain strength. We used to, as kids, we would try to do that in our backyard and get caught every single time, taking like kitchen butter knives <laughs> and strapping them to our our forearms and walking around carrying buckets full of water. We were big nerds and doing snake style on our on our little sisters and cousins. Yeah, good times. <laughs> you ever do back of somebody's head? They don't know what's gonna happen. You, they, you just stand in and you just go. And you hit them. <laughs> with the little snake style. What do you plan on doing with your? <laughs> <laughs> you just like, not gonna acknowledge my snake style. No, nope, no. Nope. I'm just I'm you know, just gonna let you uh, you know let the audience decide. You know what? The audience is with me. <laughs> they, they know snake. They know snake and eagle shadow. Dude. Oh, oh man! You know what? If you're listening, if you're within the sound of my voice, the night you listen to this podcast, watch an old kung fu movie, man. Instead of doing yeah. that, check out Trash Monk the Third on <laughs> social media at Trash Monk I I I. I post uh, a lot of fun stuff there. Good. I'm not going to besmirch my boy, my brother in arms here, Trash Monk, I, 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 but that was a low blow. That was a that was a kidney blow. Kidney blow! But yeah, also, if you like more of my weirdness, 
You can also follow follow us on Twitter, which is at Masters of the Nerdiverse. That's at M Nerdiverse on Twitter, where my goofiness knows no bounds. And uh, we talk about cool stuff like comics and video, video games and horror movies and whatever nerd things you like. The chances are we have an opinion on it. So uh, you can always like our content. May it be listening to it on YouTube or on Apple Podcasts. Please leave us a review. I'm not going to stop talking about it. Please leave us a review. And please tweet at Old Spice and ask them to give us a sponsorship. Have you been hearing it's, that? Yes. It's picking up. And Shout that's out okay. to Blue Yeti, Mike. <laughs> Blue Yeti, Mike. They'll pick up stuff you don't want heard. Yeah, that's coming out of earbuds across the room. <laughs> Strong. Strong power. Fearsome energy. But yeah, uh, leave us a review on iTunes, please, if you're listening to it via iTunes. If you're on Spotify, more power to you. Add us to your favorites. Do us a favor. You will not regret it with all the blazing content that's going to be coming from the Masters of the Nerdiverse podcast. On that note, I've been your host, Mike. Ooh. And I've been your host, Trash Monk the Third. And we will always ask you to take that one step beyond. beyond. Yeah.